Hey everybody, welcome back to the fourth episode of the Web Fundamentals Workshop. And today I'm going to be going over some of the basics of JavaScript. So today we'll be learning what is JavaScript in the first place, and then some of the basic concepts of JavaScript. And I'm going over a lot today because I'm going to be assuming that you already kind of know how to code on a different coding language. If you don't, feel free to check out our Python workshop hosted by us link in the description down below. Today we'll be coding in an online compiler called ProgramIs, and it's not going to be CodePen, and we'll be returning to CodePen in the later stages of this workshop. Now, JavaScript is a high-level programming language that is very, very similar to Python, and JavaScript is used a lot in web development, which is what we're going to be using it for in these series of workshops but also for building servers, working with databases, and much, much more. Okay, let's get into coding. So this is what program is looks like. It might be on light mode, it might look a little bit different, but main thing is on the left, you should be able to put in some code, and on the right, you should be able to see it output. Okay, let's get into hello world, your first line of JavaScript code. So instead of using a print statement, like how we've always been in Python, you can instead use console.log. Hello world. And this probably looks super similar to Python, except instead of print, we're just using console.log. And console.log works basically the same as Python. You can print out anything you want. So you can print out a number, you can even, print out an array. And if you want to print out multiple things beside each other, you can do one thing, comma, and then the second thing. So hello one, separated by a nice comma right here. Now similar to Python, you can also print the contents of a variable. So let's declare a variable called a and give it a value of three, or even better, I'm a variable. Okay, so I've declared a variable called a and gave it a value of I'm a variable. And I'm gonna be logging it. And we should see I'm a variable. Perfect. Okay. Now, before we get into variables, I just want to go over how to comment code in JavaScript. And again, it's going to work very similar to Python, except instead of using a hashtag like how we've been always using, you can just put two slashes, and anything after these two slashes on the same line will just be comments. So it won't run, and it won't go to the compiler, it won't mess with the code or anything like that. And as always, make sure you comment your code. All right. Moving on to variables, it's also going to be very, very similar to Python, except you have to watch out for just one thing, which is, do you want your variable to be reassigned an operator? So essentially, do you want a variable or do you want a constant? If you want a variable, you can use this let keyword. So let a equals to three, and I should be able to assign a a new value like so, and it's no problem whatsoever. If you don't, then you can use this cost. Okay, so right now this is totally okay. No problems whatsoever with me reassigning a variable called A. But if I try to go and reassign a value to B, then it throws a hissy fit. As you can see here, type barrier assignment to constant variable. So make sure when you're using let, you're able to change the value but if you're using a const, don't try to change the value because it's going to be throwing an error at you and it's not going to be nice. Okay, now I'm going super fast, but make sure you do ask if there's any questions and please do check out the Python workshop if you think that I might be missing some concepts that you might not really know at all in any programming language. Okay. So the next is going to be variable reassignment. And again, this is going to be very similar to Python. So let's first declare a variable, a equals to one. And let's say I want to take the current value of a, 
and I want to add 2 to it and then save it as a new value of a. So I can use the plus equals operator and this is literally taken from Python and as you can guess our new value of a should be 1 plus 2 equals to 3. And there you have it. Now obviously you can get the same result by just doing this, a equals to a plus 2. Now if you want to subtract some value from a and save it as a new value of a, you can use the minus equals and this should give you negative 1. If you want to multiply, then you can use the asterisk and equals. And if you want to divide, using the slash will give you the desired result. Okay. Now let's just quickly move on to data types. And I have here three different variables, a, b, and c. a is assigned a value, a string value that says string. b is assigned a number value that says one. And c is assigned a Boolean value that says true. And these are the three main primitive data types in JavaScript. Now, one prominent difference from Python is that with numbers, there's no ints or floats, but instead we just have number. So no matter if it's positive, negative, decimal, or whole number, it's just always just going to be a number. Now, let's say you wanted to see the type of variable. Easy. All you have to do is, okay, we're going to console log it so we can see it in the console, but you can use the type of keyword and then put the variable name right beside it. So let's say, I don't know what the type of our variable A is, so I'm going to put it into a type of operator. And what we should get is string. Now, instead of A, we put B in here we should get number, and instead of B, we put C in here, we should get boolean. All right. Okay. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about arrays. Okay, so arrays are going to be the first non-primitive data type that we cover. And arrays, as you can imagine, is just this kind of thing, a bunch of, a bunch of values put together into an array. So to declare an array, super similar to Python, just put square brackets and then do whatever values you want to put in. Now to access a value from an array, you can simply just do the array's name. So I just called my array A right here. And then I put the square bracket and put the index right inside. Now, quick reminder, index zero is pointing to the first value of my array. Okay, so I have my array one, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna be logging the first value of the array. So I should be seeing one and there we have it. I see my value one. Now, if I put four, I should be getting five because index four is pointing to the fifth element. And there we have it, five. Okay, now if you remember from Python, there's a bunch of these helper functions with arrays. And the first one is going to be the one that figures out the length for you. So you might remember something like len a which is to get the length of our array A. In JavaScript, it's going to be pretty similar, except instead of doing len A, we do A dot length. And I'm going to be console logging it. So what we should see here is that the length is equal to five because we have one, two, three, four, five elements in our array. Let's see, five. Okay, let me just get rid of this console log. Five. Boom. 
Okay. The other thing you may remember is going to be appending. So appending just means adding a value to the end of the array. So you might remember a dot append if you want to add a value to the end of the array. So let's say if we wanted to add six to the end of the array, you might put a dot append six. In JavaScript, it's going to be super similar, except instead of append, we use push. And we should be able to see our result. And there you have it. So we first started off with one, two, three, four, five. We pushed a new value six to the back. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, as expected. Now in JavaScript, obviously there's going to be a lot more helper functions with arrays. So make sure you do visit the extensive documentation for JavaScript link in the description down below. All right. Now, if statements, so this might've been the first really challenging topic for you when you were learning your first coding language, such as Python. Now, if statements in JavaScript are going to be super, super similar to if statements in Python, except with some special rules with formatting. Okay. So the first rule that's different is that your condition must be within parentheses right beside the keyword if. Okay, so I have this block of code right here, which is supposed to tell me if my variable a and b, um, which one is bigger. Okay, so I have my condition in here, a less than b. And by the way, these conditions are essentially identical to what we have in Python. So if a is less than b, it's going to run a is less than b. Uh, it's going to log a is less than b. Now, please note, any code you want to run after an if statement is evaluated, please make sure you put it inside these kinds of squiggly brackets. So if a is less than or equal to b, it's going to run the code within these squiggly brackets right here. Okay. Now you might remember something like elif from Python. Now, that was actually short for else if, and in JavaScript, we're going to be expanding that out. So we have else if a is equal to b, then we would be logging a is equal to b. And if it's not less than b, or a is not equal to b, then what we have is a is greater than b. Okay, so we have set two values, so a equals 2 and b equals 2. And we would be expecting our second a is equal to b to log in the console. And there we have it, a is equal to b. Perfect. OK, now real quick, I just want to talk about and and or. So I'm going to uncomment this line here. So you might remember and keyword and or keyword from Python. And it works basically the same in JavaScript, except instead of using and, we're going to be using two ands, two and symbols. And instead of using the actual or keyword, we're going to be using two pipes like so. Okay, let's see that in action. So what I have right here is a little block of code that tells me if a is less than or equal to b. Now, please note that less than or equal sign is a thing in JavaScript, but I'm just using this as an example. So if a is equal to b or a is less than b, then I'm going to be logging a is less than or equal to b. And if you remember, we set our two variables, a equals to 2, b equals to 2. So we should be able to see that a is less than or equal to b. All right, super similar to Python. OK, almost done. Let's get into loops. First, the for loop. OK, so maybe you remember from Python, a common use case of a for loop was iterating through a list. And let's try to do that in JavaScript. So I have this block of code that iterates through our array A and logs every single value as we go through. OK. So this is probably the first weird thing that you might see in Python, I mean, in JavaScript, that is completely different from Python. 
but all we have is something like this over here. Okay, so I have my keyword for, very familiar, and then within these parentheses, I have these three different things over here, and I'm going to explain them one by one. Let i equals to zero. This is where I declare an iterator variable. So every iteration of the for loop, we're going to be changing this iterator variable i over here. Now our for loop is going to be going until i reaches a dot length. So if you remember, this is going to be the length of our array a. So in this case, it should be 5. So i is going to be going until it equals to 5. And finally, we have i++. And I like to think of i++ as something like i plus equals to 1. So it's basically just taking the current value of i and adding 1 to it. In this case, all it means is every single iteration, it's just adding 1 to our iterator variable i. So in our first iteration, i is going to equal to 0. And console log is going to be console logging a0. So it's going to be the first element. And then after our first iteration, it's going to add 1 to i. And i is now going to equal to 1. And we're going to be trying to find the first index of our const, our loop, I mean our array a, and so on and so forth. And it should go until i is equal to 4. So on our last iteration, i is going to equal to 4. And then we're going to be printing out the fourth index of our array a. And then once it goes through, it's going to add 1 to 4. And then it's going to realize that, hey, i is now equal to 5, which is no longer just less than our length of our array, which is also 5. So this should be printing out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in order. OK, let's see what happens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Awesome. Now let's get into while loops in JavaScript. And this is going to be working pretty much the same as Python. So while loops are a loop that keep going until a condition is no longer met. So what we have here is while our variable b is less than c, then it's going to log our value of the variable b and add 1 to b. Okay. So what I have here is I have b equals to 0, I have c equals to 5, and I'm just going to throw it into this block of code and see what gets printed out. And what we should see is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. OK, so you should get why this is happening. So in our first iteration, we have our original value, 0, being printed out, and then 1 is being added to it. And then in our next iteration, 1 is being printed out, and then 1 is being added to 1 to give us 2, and then so on and so forth until we reach b equals to 4. So now it's going to log 4 onto the console, add 1 to 4, b is going to equal to 5. And now b, which is equal to 5, is no longer less than c, which is equal to 5. So it's not going to be printing anymore, and it's going to exit out of the while loop. So this works literally the same as Python, except your condition is in brackets like this. And any code you want to run is within these squiggly brackets like so. So let's get into functions. And what I wrote here as an example is a function that adds together two numbers that are passed into it. Okay. So I have function add together a, b, and then goes in, and then logs out a plus b, and it also returns a plus b. So this looks literally identical to Python, except for two little differences. Instead of using the def keyword that we're all super familiar with, we're using this function keyword here. And this is the name of our function. And then this is the arguments that we're passing in to this function. And then we have the block of code we want to run in these squiggly brackets once again. OK, so I'm going to be using our homemade function to add together 1 and 2. 
and we should be able to see what gets printed out to the console, which is going to be 3, which is just 1 and 2 added together, exactly as our function intended. Okay. Now, I want to show you guys something that makes JavaScript quite unique, and it's that with JavaScript, you can do something like this over here. So I'm going to define a function that says say hi, and all it's going to do is it's going to log hi in the console. And what you can do, actually, is you can, what you can do is you can put these functions as arguments to other functions. Okay, so what I have here, so set timeout is a built-in JavaScript function that executes this function that's passed in after a certain delay. Okay, so after five seconds or 5,000 milliseconds, it should run this say hi function, which prints out hi in the console. So what we should see is say hi, so hi being printed out into the console after five seconds. Let's see what happens. So nothing's happening for five seconds, but then boom, hi is printed out into the console, just like that. Okay, now make sure you guys do ask any questions if you have any, of course, in the comments below or in the Discord. All right, so our final topic is gonna be about objects. And this is gonna be maybe the first thing that is drastically different from Python, but still very similar because objects look eerily similar to dictionaries and they work essentially the same. What we have here is an object called car. I've just assigned it to a const right here. And what we have is these props or properties or keys, like you know in Python dictionaries, and then a value attached to the key right here. So in our car object here, this ID is going to be two. Its make is going to be a Toyota and its model is going to be a Corolla. Okay. Now, super similar to Python, you can access this ID by doing it like this. So I want to console log the ID of my car right here. And the way I do that is I put the object or car, and then I put square brackets right beside it. And within these square brackets, I'm going to put in the name of the key or the property in string, like so. So this code block should be able to print out our ID of the car object right here, which is two. And similarly, we can print out the make of our car, like so, Toyota, and the model. Okay, now what's interesting about JavaScript objects is that this is not the only way that you can access a very access a value in the object. And you can also do it like this. So you can do object dot property. So object dot ID, for example. So if I do car dot ID, it should print out two. And boom, it printed out two like so. And same thing should happen if I put make and if I put the model, oops, model like so. And there we have it. Okay, now one thing you might have noticed when I was making a mistake is if you put in a property of an object that doesn't really exist, so for example, let's say I want to put in, I don't know, the color of our car. And if it doesn't exist, it's going to print out undefined instead of throwing an error at us. So keep this in mind for our practice problems below, which we're going to get into right into right now. So let's try our first practice problem. So create a function that checks an array has a string element of one. So I'll get you some starter code like so. So let's have add, or not add, um, check element one, pass an array. 
Okay, pause the video and complete the code here. So I'll give you a couple seconds. Please pass the video. Welcome back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a for loop as we learned. And let's do what i equals to zero, i is less than array dot length, and i plus plus. So this little for loop here enables us to check through an array. Okay. So let's say let's set this indicator variable. So let include one equals to false at first. And if array i equals equals to 1, then we're going to set include 1 as equal to true. And then we're going to return include 1. Okay. So what we have here is we're going to set this variable right here, which indicates if our array does include 1 or not. And we're going to initially set it as false by default. Next, we're going to iterate through our array. And if the i element of the array that we're in is equal to 1, then we're going to set include 1 to equal to true. And we're going to be returning include 1. Let's test. I'm going to declare an array. So let's declare an array called A. And let's do an array that doesn't include one. So I don't know, zero, uh, hi, sheesh, and five. And let's pass it into include one. So check element one of A. And let's log it. False. There we go. Now let's test it with, let's say if we change this to one, true. There we go, our code is working. Okay, our second problem here is to create a function that checks if an object has an attribute called ID. Let me write you some setup code. Function of check if ID exists object. All right, so let's try to complete the code here. I'll give you a couple seconds. Please pause the video. All right, welcome back. So what we're gonna do is if you remember from our earlier example right here, if we do something like console.log object, some object dot a property that doesn't exist then it should return undefined in the console. Okay, let's do something like this. So if the object dot ID is equal to undefined, I'm going to return false. And otherwise, I'm going to return true. Okay, so what I did right here is I did if the object dot ID equals to undefined, then I'm going to return false. And otherwise, that means that our ID is not undefined after all, then I'm going to return true. Okay, let's test our code. I'm going to make a sample object. Okay, let's make one that has an ID. So let's do ID is equal to one, and name is equal to, I don't know, I triple E. Okay, so let's check if ID exists on our sample object right here. Let's save the verdict to a variable. Uh, I don't know, ID exists. And let's log it. And there you have it, true.
Okay, let's test our code if id does not exist. So let's just delete this entire line. False. Here we have it. Okay, so that's it for the JavaScript lesson. Sorry for going super fast. And if you were confused, feel free to look back on the video. And please, please, please check out our Python workshop. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.